late 6th century, Mecca, Arabia. Just beside the city, on an open field, some boys have gathered in the afternoon. Soon, they started to wrestle each other to find out who is the strongest among them. After several rounds, there remained only two. The final match began. Both the boys fought with absolute resolution to win the final round. But in the end, the taller one lifted the other one on the shoulder and pushed him to the ground. Finally, there was a champion. The name of the champion was Khalid, son of Al-Walid. And the name of the boy who was defeated was Umar, son of Al-Khattab. These boys were having fun, pushing each other and laughing and giggling. They were carefree. Little did they know at that time that both of them would be immortalized in history, but for different reasons. Among them, Umar would become the ruler of almost half of the ancient world and Khalid would become the most successful military commander in human history. Such was a transformation of life in Mecca in the late 7th century that two boys from a relatively unknown corner of the world would leave their permanent footsteps not only in the history of Arabia but also in the history of mankind. But for now, as the sun sets down the horizon, the boys go back to the city unaware of the big unfolding of events that is coming towards them. Our story of Khalid ibn al-Walid begins here. Khalid's father, al-Walid, was one of the most important people in Mecca at the time. He was the leader of Bani Makhzum, one of the main sub-tribes of the Bani Quraysh. The Bani Maqsum tribe was responsible for the defense of the city and training of the Qurayshi warriors. Al-Walid was also one of the richest men of the city. His trade caravans were frequently traveling to Syria and Yemen. On top of that, he was the official poet of Bani Quraysh. This was a role of great honor at that time. So Al-Walid had it all, power, wealth and fame. As a result, Khalid had a very comfortable and luxurious upbringing compared to other people in Mecca at that time. However, that does not mean that he did not have to participate actively in the society. It was obligatory for all the Makhzumi male to train for warfare and to learn to ride horses. From a very early age, Khalid started his military training. On top of that, he was really talented in military skills and soon become one of the finest warriors of the whole of Arabia. As he grew up, he also took part in Al-Walid's trade expeditions and thus visited different parts of Arabia. Life was very smooth for Khalid in the beginning of the 7th century. He was enjoying his family fortune and was friends with the most powerful people of Quraysh. But from the year 610, the Meccan society started to change. And the cause of that was the coming of divine revelations of the Prophet Muhammad At first, the day-to-day -day life was continuing as if nothing had changed. But after some time, the followers of Prophet وسلم, who started to identify themselves as Muslims started to grow in number and in strength. The chiefs of different Meccan sub-tribes including Khalid's father Al-Walid became fearful that this growth of Muslims under Prophet وسلم, would reduce their absolute power over the Meccan society. So they started to work actively against the spreading of Islam. Soon the Muslims were being tortured, humiliated, and isolated from society. At this point, Khalid was not much bothered about the emergence of Islam. Although his father, Al-Walid, and his cousin, Amr bin Hisham, would later be known as Abu Jahl, 
led the Quraysh against the Muslims. Khalid was mostly keeping himself busy with becoming a better warrior and with trade expeditions throughout Arabia.